Superior military technology and numbers alone do not decide the course of a war. The skill of soldiers in their innovative strategies also matter a lot. The 1965 war between India and Pakistan is an excellent testament to this. Back then, India had ambushed Pakistan's American-made Sabre aircraft with much inferior Nats fighter jets. This video is an ode to the exceptional skills of those Air Force pilots and the leadership that backed them. August 5, 1965 Trouble started when over 30,000 Pakistani soldiers infiltrated into regions across Kashmir disguised as Kashmiri tribesmen. Pakistan had assumed that India was still recovering from the losses she had suffered during the Indo-Chinese War of 1962 and would not put up much resistance. But the alert Kashmiri natives quickly tipped off the Indian forces. Immediate action followed. The Indian political and military leadership were prepared to go into a full-blown war with Pakistan if needed. Pakistan enjoyed a close relationship with the US in the 60s. America had even given $1.25 billion worth of weapons and aid to them. As a result, Pakistani army boasted of superior American-made Patton tanks and artillery in its arsenal. Apart from this, America had also gifted high-end Sabre jets and most modern star fighters to them. Meanwhile, India only had outdated Centurion tanks and fighter jets back then. Indian Air Force had in its possession aircraft such as Vampire, Mistier and Nat. They were technologically inferior in comparison. The then military ruler of Pakistan, Ayub Khan, assumed that defeating India with these advanced weapons would be an easy feat. On the 1st of September, Pakistani army initiated direct attacks on India under what was named as Operation Grand Slam. This attack was carried out by large military formations that included Patton's, Sherman tanks and Jackson tank destroyers. Though initially taken aback by this sudden attack, Indian Army responded fiercely. But it was true that an Indian Army with its smaller and outdated tanks would not be able to hold off the massive Pakistani force for long. Indian Army turned to the Air Force for help. Soon, Indian Air Force fighter jets that took off from the base at Patan Kot shard heavy fire on Pakistani Army that was progressing across the border. In the attack, Pak Army lost 13 tanks and 62 military vehicles to the Vampire and Mistier aircraft of the Indian Air Force. This forced Pakistan to bring out their best aircraft to the front line. The Pak Air Force had positioned 120 Sabres and 14 Star Fighters that they had received from the US in Peshawar, Sargodha and Moripur. Though the Indian Air Force fought fiercely against these advanced Pakistani jets, it was impossible for the Indian Vampire Jets to effectively resist the Pakistani Sabre Jets which were known to be the best dogfighters back then. The Sabres shot down three vampires that day. India also lost control of the Chamberia. But the combined effort of Indian Army and Air Force ensured that the Pakistani forces could not advance any further. Meanwhile, Indian Army deployed more forces including armor vehicles in the region. The plan was, of course, to launch a strong counter-attack. By then, the Indian Air Force had pulled out their outdated vampires from the front line and redeployed them elsewhere. Pakistan publicly claimed that Indian Air Force was cowering in fear at the sight of the Pakistani Sabres. India's Air Chief Marshal Arjun Singh was determined to bust the myth that Sabres were unbeatable. Not only was he a great strategist, but also one of the finest pilots India has ever produced. He knew very well that Sabres were objectively much superior to the aircrafts India had back then. After all, Sabre jets had the best combat records since World War II. Their performance against MiG-15s in the Korean War had given them worldwide fame. The most notable feature of these aircrafts was their Sidewinder heat-seeking missiles that had an operational range of 5 kilometers. Apart from this, Pakistan had also deployed star fighters to assist the Sabres in their mission. Star fighters were one of the few supersonic fighter planes in use back then. 
Pakistan firmly believed that Indian jets could come nowhere close to their high-end aircrafts. They calculated that India was most likely to deploy their Hawker Hunters to counter the Sabres. However, Arjun Singh had other plans. He prepared an elaborate trap for the Sabres using lightweight NAT aircrafts. On September 3, four Mystier aircrafts and eight NAT aircrafts left the Pathankot base, heading towards Chamb. The four Mystiers flew at a height of 1500 feet, while four of the eight Nats flew at a height of 300 feet and the remaining four at a height of 100 feet. The Mystiers, flying at the top, were tasked with gaining the attention of the Pakistani radars. As soon as Pak radars detected Indian jets, Sabres were deployed. By then, the Mystiers had started making their way back to Indian base. The Sabres pursued them. Suddenly, four NAT jets that had until then stayed off the radar charged up and reached an altitude of 30,000 feet in just 90 seconds. These NATs, which were then flying higher than the Sabres and had an edge. Realizing the danger, Sabres tried to return to safety. The Predator had become a prey. The first Sabre jet was shot down by Indian Air Force Flight Lieutenant Trevor Killaw. In the coming days, Nats continued to hunt down Sabres in the same way. Pakistan lost seven Sabre jets to the Indian Air Force during this period. Pakistan even refrained from deploying Sabres, dreading the Nat attacks. India had reclaimed air supremacy. Nats thus came to be known as Sabre Slayers. By then, the Indian Army had started advancing in Punjab through another war front reaching as far as Lahore and Sialkot. Indian Army captured almost 2,000 square kilometers of Pakistani territory. It was only after a diplomatic intervention by the Soviet Union that the pre-war borders were reinstated. Though British-made, the Royal Air Force only saw NAT as a trainer jet. These aircrafts were even used by the world-renowned aerobatics team, Red Arrows. The success of the Indian Air Force lay in that fact that they could identify the potential of an aircraft that was only seen as a lightweight fighter or trainer aircraft and could deploy it effectively. NAT aircrafts also contributed immensely to India's success in the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. Post-war, India also gifted a number of NAT aircrafts to the newly liberated Bangladesh. Though the Indian Air Force has always appreciated the performance of NAT jets, the fact remains that they were major shortcomings in their hydraulics and control systems. Hence, India obtained manufacturing license for these aircrafts from the British, brought about the required modifications and indigenously built them as Ajit. Over 175 HAL manufactured NATs have been a part of the Indian Air Force. This incident from 1965 is an excellent demonstration of the fact that Indian forces, even back then, had the ability to recognize the potential of weapons and put them to best use. This is exactly what makes Indian forces special even today. Jai Hind!